Welcome back. It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. And I'm glad to say we're joined by uh, the man who is of Plus TV Sports, Wally Scott. As we look at um, the shocking news coming uh, on account regarding Nigerian truck star and record holder Blessing O'Habare, who uh, received a 10-year doping ban um, from the athletics authorities. And of course, um, the latest is that she um, has said she'll be reverting to her lawyer and uh, approaching the court of arbitration for sports to challenge the 10-year ban slammed on her by the Athletics Integrity Unit for out-of-competition doping violations. Um, the Sprinters Council, uh, Chinedu Udora, disclosed this while speaking with newsmen uh, in an interview saying that Ohabere's team will appeal the decision of the tribunal and is considering several options in addition to looking at things they believed were not right. Let's uh, welcome Wally Scott at this time. Well, is, is it Okagbari or Habari? Okagbari. Okagbari. Yes. Right. Okay. Interesting. Um, <laughs> um, you, you're welcome. Well, this, this, this comes as a, a shock, I believe, to some, uh, uh, to a lot of Nigerians, if you look at what's going on on social media. Where are you shocked? As somebody who is a, a sports um, expert and knows about these things, but uh, most of us do, were you, were you surprised? Nigerian sports fans, yes. Surprised, yes. I try to look at, at the humor. In every situation, I, I, I don't try to see, see the seriousness in it. Nigerian fans, yes, shocked. Sports journalists, no. Yeah, because um, so. I'll explain to you. As a cop journalist, at a point in my, while I was still a cop reporter, I interviewed an, an athlete. I'll leave a name out of it this morning. Okay. You know, and popular, we were, popular. No. Yeah, quite popular. Was it, was it yeah. a medal winner? I, I, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. I Yes, yes. He's looking for trouble, <laughs> you know. But, you know, she, we, we spoke about it, and she was actually caught for doping at that point in time. And she explained to me on my show then and said, well, really, um, I had a cough, so I got a cough mixture, and um, I didn't know codeine was a banned substance. But, you know, I'm just a sports journalist. I'm not a medical practitioner, but I know codeine is a banned substance. You know, so you ask yourself, where are their media team and their medical teams? They should know codeine is a banned substance. But she claims she had a cough. Of course, as an athlete, as a human being, you can have a cough. But to use a cough mixture that has codeine in it, knowing that codeine is a banned substance, is wrong. The only reason why I can overlook her case medically is that codeine doesn't make you any faster. It actually makes you slower. So that won't help our race or anything, you know. In Okagbari's case, they, I, they've consistently said, listen, we're not particularly angry at you because you doped. No. We're angry at you because we have invited you numerous times to investigate your situation and you have refused to come. Like Messi was asking a few minutes ago, why did she refuse to go? We don't know. Now she's calling her lawyers. She wants to appeal. Appeal not, being, not um, going for your invitation. Which, which of the appeals does she want to appeal? The doping case or not going for the investigation panel? Because they're actually telling you now that, listen, we're not particularly, because let's ask ourselves a question. You use a human growth um, drug, okay? okay? Does it actually warrant 10 years? No, really. It doesn't. 10 years is massive for any, a decade. For any event. And she's 33. Mm. So where does she start from at 43? Yeah, our, our career, all things being equal, is over. But they are saying that, listen, we're not particularly punishing you because you doped. You can get two, three years, four years, max five years for that. But we actually invited you numerous times and refused to come to the... A committee was set up consistently for her and she refused to go. So it, it brings me to this question now because, uh, you know, you could look at the list. Of course, you're a sports journalist and... Uh, we've had several persons on that list, Choma, Junwa, you have Miro Nyali, great Which fan. List? Uh, you know, the list of persons who have actually been banned and eventually okay. returned. Okay. 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 Uh, returned you know, to, to, banned to two years, three years, man. So, so, so my question now is, is there a possibility that, you know, with this 10-year ban, she could go in, I mean, she could do the ban and then come back and return to the career, uh, just like the few names I've mentioned? My friend who works with a foreign media station, we were talking yesterday, mm. and he said that um, he spoke to one of the committee members who were supposed to investigate Okagbari, and they said the only reason why she was running from the panel was because she had something to hide. That will be a case for her. A lawyer will have a lot of work to do.
a lot of work to do because you have to convince that committee that she had nothing to hide and then three four times you didn't come for the if there's something wrong somewhere okagbari was obviously hiding something and the party will tell you that they say listen we're not saying she she didn't do she, oh, well she agrees she doped okay two three years max but why was she running from the investigative panel so, but don't we That's the problem she will have. So, so don't we have a system? So, now, I'm not sure you've answered. I understand uh, the point that you've made. My concern is, do you see her doing the 10-year ban and returning back just like, like her counterparts, the like of Mary Yali and uh, Choma Juwa? Really? Right? Do, do you see her go... No, really? I'm asking you. You, you, you expect, you expect her to come back at 43? If, yeah. So, there's no And do what now? No, I'm asking you. Come back and do what at 43? How? Listen, this is not football where there are 11 players on the field of play where I can pass the ball to Mercy, pass the ball to Kofi, and then we can actually rest while we pass the ball. This is it, it, solo uh, events, sport events. It's solo. So, you're, you're on your own. You have to be physically, mentally strong to actually get this done. And Okagbari has been described many times in our media tabloids as the queen of tracks of Nigeria. At 33, she's already going down. There's always a decline at this point in this in sports. And at 43, which come back and do what now? Uh, 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 she has retired well, <laughs> right you, now. You <laughs> talked about, about the, the previous you know, instances and uh, you know, uh, some Nigerian athletes who have had this, this issue. Even though you refuse to tell us who that other person was, but I can understand, of course, it's, it has to be in confidence. Um, some of the people out there, especially on, online, have drawn, uh, have said, you know, this is uh, it's racism. Uh, and, and they've looked at Maria Sharapova's case. I was, no, I was, I was going to go to Sharapova's case is even too much. It's too far. Just recently, I, I don't want to use the word racism. I want to use the word double standards. Okay. I like that. Okay. You know, this young lady was caught for marijuana. What Sharapova. we call Igbo. Okay. She's an American, a black American. Scott for what you call Igbo. Oh, oh, the, oh, the black American athlete. Yes. Oh, and the, the one, the one and who they, said the THC does not yes. uh, and they, give faster. And they banned her. Yeah, yeah. They banned her, and you ask yourself a question. In the state she lives in, in the country she lives in, cannabis sativa is actually legal. It's not illegal, unlike in Nigeria. So she actually says, what I did and what you are testing me for and saying I did wrong is actually legal in my country. So, but and they banned her. Mm -hmm. And then a young lady, Valieva, who used the same thing. Black or white? White. white who used the same thing that Okagbari used, was exempted, and she was at the Winter Olympics. What, 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 what remind us of what Okagbari you said of used again? A, a, a human growth, growth hormone. Yeah, was a, human growth. Growth. Yes. Yeah. But this Valieva young lady used the same thing. She was exempted. She actually competed in the Winter Olympic Games. <laughs> That, that ended yesterday. Wow. So wow. where I'm going is, I don't want to use the word racism. I want to use the word double standards. This girl used cannabis, which is legal in her country. And then Valieva used a human hormone, hormone drug that Okagbari used too. And she was exempted and she competed and ended the, the Olympics with them last yesterday. All right. So, she's, so I'm, think, I'm sure she has it's a, a double plan. standard thing. Uh, what, what, what do you think about the, the, the reaction of, of, of Nigerians to to Okagwara is uh, the news of her, her ban. You know, a lot of news outlets carrying it, a lot of, uh, and you get the sense that um, bad news flies fast because everywhere Okagwara has been banned, 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 banned. You know, but um, uh, I mean, some people were saying, no, what, where is the sense of um, uh, a pity, sense of, uh, you know, um, sort of like consideration for her in, in the spread of this information without at least adding something to make it seem a bit, you know, uh, fair because she's been, the one flying the flag of Nigeria over the past few years, as sure. far as getting medals are concerned, sure. at some times to her personal cost. <laughs> you know, we don't most I mean, times. Most times, you know about that. Most you know, times, yeah. To a personal cost. You know, so so I mean, you think that um, the way we've talked about it, the way we've um, I mean, even you, you've said that well, she had no excuse, blah blah blah. Do you think we should be more sympathetic towards her at this time in in, in our coverage of this? Okagwara is um, my person, as in person individually. And um, Okagbari did something for, um, for Nigerians at the Commonwealth Games in Manchester. And I was fortunate to have been there. And she actually led a protest that the relay team would not run. Why? Because they give them 100 pounds every day. And the 100 pounds wasn't coming. And she fought for the rest of the crew.
I said, listen, we must get our money. That's and it, who, and you see, who, who gives the Nigerian uh, athletic? Now, yeah, now, yes, of course, the, the Nigerian government. And, and, you know, it was sad that at that point in time, this is funny. It's, it seems funny, though. At that point in time, while Okagbari was protesting, a particular Nigerian minister, who wasn't supposed to be on the entourage in the first place, was actually being told by the hotel to pay them the £2,800 he was owing for watching porn. And then we were not we were not giving our athletes. Yeah, 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 <laughs> he had a porn channel on. Of course. <laughs> and he was actually owing two thousand eight hundred pounds. That's so on on on, on our, national our, money. Exactly. And we're not pay, we're not paying our athletes their hundred pounds daily. And Okagbari stood up. Everybody was like, I don't want Wala. I don't want Wala. Okagbari was the only one who actually said, We're not going to run. We will stay. And that singular um incident gave me a lot of respect for her. I actually walked to her, interviewed her that day, and I said, thank you very much. You know, I had to thank her because most Nigerians don't stand up for their rights. She did that day. Yeah, for the other people as well. For the other it, for her, she, it wasn't for her. She was cool. Yeah. She had enough funds to actually take care of herself. Okay. But some Nigerian athletes who actually work in Nigeria, ply their trades here, didn't have. And she was, was fight, they she was good. fighting for and them. If you, if you come back home, that money don't enter. You don't finish. You don't finish. You don't finish. <laughs> so let's, let's talk about, you know, the issue of control now uh, with the doping issue. I remember, you know, this report that was put out in 2018 where uh, you have the system and the structure saying the government, of course, at the time, not, uh, you know, the government in charge of uh, the system. So, uh, for instance, the Nigerian Olympic Committee saying we have been doing a lot to control doping issues among athletes uh, with collaboration. I mean, international collaboration, one of that, because you also have mentioned on the other hand that sometimes uh, someone could have a cough and then decide to treat it, not knowing what not to take. And so the approach, it feels like the approach over time that the Nigerian structure or the structure, the Nigerian, uh, the Olympic uh, Committee has taken is that of um, awareness, uh, I think creating should, awareness and it, I think you it's know, what enlightenment. The, the World Anti-Doping Agency are the ones who are in charge of that. And they do their regular um, out of competition checks um, three times a year and all that. And... Someone. No, no, I'm talking about, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about now, you know, when we come to the Nigerian, you know, um, the country itself. There's a little we can do about it. Look at Nigeria, for example. We went for the Olympics recently and over 16 or 17 at least were sent back home because they failed their dope test. And then Nigeria governments will look at you and tell you, ah, but we sent for you now. We sent you an email now. You didn't come. And I'm asking myself, which can't talk with that? You know, really? You say we sent for you, you didn't come for the test. And it, how can you say you sent for your athlete? And that was that was a failure to do some certain uh, uh, um, uh, routine tests. Exactly. Because Russia, for example, mm -hmm. Russia has been banned. They actually go for competitions now as ROC. Without a flag. Without a flag. Yeah, that's Russia, Russia yes, because they say it was state-sponsored doping, which means the government knew they were doping and looked away. But in Nigeria's case, it's negligence. Nigeria's case, we don't serve for them at all. No, but, 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 we say we serve for them. But you have the Nigerian Olympic competition. Exactly. Incompetent. That's yeah. the point. Is, is that what happens when you have you know, people who are not professionals in this, uh, in this sport of travel? Yes, sports it? generally. Yeah. Not even sports generally. In Nigeria generally, politics, sports, whatever. We need to put round pegs in round holes. As long as we have, um, for example, Kofi um, um, campaigned very well for this man. So when the demand gets there and becomes somebody, Which coffee thing? becomes commissioner for something. Um, I hope, I hope, it's more I, stuff I, I like hope that. that's not going to stop anyone from giving. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but, but this, this no, is no. the premise I'm coming from. The fact that you have the, because, I mean, one would like to know, the Nigerian Olympic Committee has been saying that there's, they've been doing a lot in terms of, you know, ensuring that there's control with doping amongst athletes. I mean, the media, the media person for the NOC, um, Femi Aditula, mm. um, we still spoke yesterday. She sent me a message yesterday about a, a barbating person. You know what? The issue is that case of those people that were sent back home mm. for failing their dope test mm. has already put a smear mm. on the NOC. Love it or leave it. So, so and my, then this so, at least has consistently said, listen, we even, some even said they even called and said, when are we going to have our tests? Oh, some athletes. Some of them actually said, we actually called and said, our tests, I haven't run any tests this year yet. And and they didn't. They, so, 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 so what was the aftermath um, of, of that scandal? They've all got come back home. Yes. They have gone for their other businesses and no, all that. No, I'm talking about the, the in terms of the National, National Living Committee or even the Ministry of Sports or whatever. What was the aftermath of that scandal? Was there any inquiry? As long as politics 
stays in sports in Nigeria yeah. and politics doesn't leave sports in Nigeria, nobody is going to be queried. So nothing, what is going to, nothing is going to happen now. But has gone. anything happened since then? Has maybe at least maybe National Assembly called anyone to come in? Just even if it's just for the cameras, answer any questions. Well, I, I guess um, they were invited. Okay. I, I can't remember what actually... Okay. What, 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 they, they explained themselves. They said then they at least did not come and all that. But all things being equal, it's all negligence. Because the truth to be said, if the athlete... Like, I, I blame the athletes too. Don't get me wrong. Because like I always tell people, or I tell our, our coaches in Nigeria, they don't like me very much. The next Stephen catch it doesn't like me very much. Eguavone doesn't like me very much. But I tell them, I say, listen, you guys want to be at par with foreign coaches. If the government, don't blame the government for every time rain falls too much or sun shines too much. If the government doesn't bring money to take you for courses, go on the internet. Check for private courses for coaches. Raise the money and go on. It's for your betterment. Better yourself. So I'm saying that if the government are negligent, they don't call you to come and get your, your tests. Come for your test by yourself. I said, I'm here now. I want my test done now. Then the government say no. So the athletes, some of them actually say we called. But how many of them called? If the government doesn't call you, you are an athlete. You should know better. So, so for me, in all of this, is uh, they have also cited the issue of ignorance amongst you know these athletes and what have you, not knowing what to take and to take, and the approach that they have over time set to control the issue of doping in the system. Because we need to understand what they are doing to help us, you know, reduce uh, the level of all of this kind of experiences. I mean, so um, they have said the strategy we have employed is to create awareness, education. Uh, because some of these athletes don't know what to take. Like you, you, you rightly mentioned that. I think it's that. a lie. Most of our athletes in Africa, mm -hmm. not in Nigeria alone now. Okay. I, I have to say the Nigerian thing. Okay. In Africa, most of them are greedy. Okay. It's not like they are that poor. They are all right financially. Okay. They can actually afford, even if it's one man I, in your medical team, who is a doctor, a sports doctor, who can take care of you. Ignorance is not an excuse in law. So we're doing enough to educate the, this athlete in Educate Nigeria? who now? You are an athlete. You should have a medical team. I don't expect any athlete to know what drug to take and what drug. I, I can't expect that. For example, there's a long list of what to take and what not to take. And there are some funny, funny names there. Charles Bokinikon, Kolo Kinikon. You can't know what it is. Only medical people will know. You're, you're being hard on, on these athletes. I'm um, not. Uh, you, it's you, not an excuse to say can that I, can I, say, I don't you, know what to take. How many people who are ill in this country look at the fine print of the drugs they buy each time they buy drugs to read everything? You know, you How know, many of them it, are athletes? Yeah, no, or thing, footballers or I, I do agree that, that you should you should have, you know, your own personal interest at heart to say my development and my advancement, my success is dependent on what I can do for myself. True. But ultimately there is a so there are sort of people who have been taxed with the responsibility of administering the sport. Let's look at track and field for instance in Nigeria. And you have to have a program. Because sometimes illiteracy can come into play. True. I mean, this guy who is um, in, in, uh, in uh, wait, wait, I don't know which European country he is, and is it America now? The one said, I never aspired it. Uh, it was a young man sitting from Delta State. Even when he said, I never aspired it, you know, with that level of education he had at the time and exposure, would he know everything? You know, so, in so, Nigeria, so, our, so, our if, if the guys, if the guys who are meant to administer and have a program to make sure they, they educate these people and exactly. guide them, because and, you can't take that them. away. Nineteen athletes going to an international tournament and failing, you have to blame that specifically. No on, doubt on the administration. See, we already mm. know our administrators the government. are negligent. Mm. We know that they are irresponsible. We know that already. That's why I'm going to saying that. Listen, it's your career. Blessing or Kagbari. What if you call? How what if you, you call the government and they, 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 for? I want like you said, some athletes said we want to have tests, and those tests are not conducted because the government is negligent. It's so what they do? Bottleneck. Nothing now. You see, the truth to be said. If the government will take care of you, take yeah. care of yourself. No, no. But can you go do your own test yeah. test somewhere? Yes. Don't we have the the standard? I have a friend. The standard original, like like um, because uh, each state, each country should have its own procedures. Must it not be certified by the authorities? You know, and all that. No, you don't. It doesn't have you can to. Just go anyway. If um, the government doesn't send your tests to WADA, the World Anti-Doping Agency, go to WADA yourself. And if you know that, okay, good. It's it's, it's a case of um. My government's negligence, I can't, I'm not abroad, I'm in Nigeria here, send Wadai letter. Or oh, they just drink water. I told my government, 
Or they just drink water. Am I mean, their business? Because, <laughs> because, 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 because you know, what if the water can? I mean, this is on a lighter note because this conversation really? is getting very intense. Really? <laughs> Maybe they just need to just drink water and that's the end. And just say, they okay. can't do that because there's, there's water a, is there's, pure. There's, there's, there's a guy. There's a guy who, who works with, <laughs> with, the, with the Lagos State Government. His name is Buki, Doctor Buki. He's a sports doctor. That's all he does. We call him Bukato. And whenever there is going to be a small, maybe like a sports festival, I can assure you, the Lagos State athletes, they may not win gold all the time. They may not be the, the best in what they do. I don't know what other states do. There's talk on that day. We all know what other states do to ensure they win. You know what? That's talk on that day. You know what? I can tell you that the fittest athletes at the sports festival, at any of the festivals, are the Lagos State athletes. Oh, because... Because Bukato will always sit them down. They're all youngsters. You know, sit them down and tell them, don't eat, for now, don't eat this. For now, don't drink this. For now, don't do so this. So he's just in of uh, sports, sports in Lagos. State. Not really. He's, he's a sports doctor. Yeah, so he, this is what I'm talking about. As in, okay, if an athlete can actually say, okay, good, I'm in Lagos or I'm in Abuja or wherever, and I can raise, most of them have sponsors, I can raise a little money. Doctor, okay, please, once okay. in a while, yeah. just come check me. Tell me what to do. Or even if it's WhatsApp, tell me what to eat. Okay. Tell me what to drink. Tell me what to do. How should I work it out? He can tell you. Where I'm going to is that the government have failed us. No doubt. Should we fail ourselves? Should I wait for the government to always tell me how to do it's your career so so moving, really. mo moving forward it sounds like you know you preferring a solution that these athletes need to take their career in their more own seriously hand. Yes. They need to begin to take you know some decisive the steps, governments can't do it all. including uh, going to the extent of getting to those international sports and national yeah. level to yeah. uh, getting ensuring that they have been verified or they have been whatever the case might be just blow that trumpet and alarm love That's it or leave it most of us who are sports presenters are actually disappointed with your very, very. Okay. Because she's someone who goes for regular international meets. It's like so saying, she should know. It's like saying table tennis, Haruna Kodri is, 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 is banned for doping. And you're like, this guy goes for international, like, he's going to Yingbu. You know? S so they this, should know better. System, yeah. She might not be literate, like we, like whatever. She might not be as knowledgeable as we know. But this is someone who is practically always abroad. Much, much more than she's in Nigeria. Ignorance in that this uh, on various level. Yes, the athletes who were sent to most of them in Nigeria. I can understand that. I can take that. But not if an athlete like Hokagbari at that level. Hokagbari has run with everybody who matters in the female sprint world. Across every meet in the world, from Paris to Scotland to London, everywhere. So for an Hokagbari to tell you she doped, and the people are even saying it's not the doping that is doing us. And then she they tell you to come for. And, and, and they invite you to, for investigation once, twice, thrice, four times, and you don't go. serious cause. I mean, she, they, are, they are saying she had something to hide. So, so moving forward, how do we prevent uh, all of this? I mean, we know that you have young people who are aspiring and who are getting into the scene of this, becoming an athlete and getting into the sporting world. Uh, how, what can the government do now? Because from your conversation, you have broken it down to the fact that government has a responsibility to play. The, these athletes as uh, individuals also have a role to play in ensuring that their career is actually in the right direction and the right course. And so uh, let's break it down in this strata. What, who is supposed to do what at what level, uh, the responsibility that everyone... Because at the end of the day, it's a national disgrace. I mean, <laughs> that's what I think. The fact that you wake up and then you hear that... Uh, your very favorite superstar has been banned 10 years, you know, for doping issues, whether or not it's a fault or whether or not whatever it is. How do we prevent all of this? And you say what, well, who should do what? The athletes should do what first? No, no. First of all, at what point does the government come in, the federation, the, the sporting federation? I don't know The how government it's doesn't, called. they don't live with you. Okay. They don't know what you do. So, but I'm saying that there's diet. a federation. I'm saying that there's a, there's, a, there's a federation that, uh, you know, controls everything. Yeah, even the federation too don't live with you. So the, 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 the what you're talking about starts from discipline from the athlete themselves. Okay. I shouldn't do this. I shouldn't smoke marijuana. I shouldn't drink alcohol. I shouldn't, they should know that first off. And then what the federation can do is once in a while call you guys to a big hall and talk to you guys and the doctors check you guys and all that. That's the best they can do. But the bulk still falls on the table of the athletes. They must be disciplined. They must understand 
Cristiano Ronaldo went to Manchester United. And the first thing he did was try to talk the players into changing their diets. Yes, I think they saw him eating, you know, you know very strictly in the center. Yeah. So you, know, change, you guys change where, your diet. Where has it gotten them? <laughs> <laughs> Nowhere yet. Yet. But you know, yeah. it won't it's start. It's part of the process. Won't start, it's a process, you know. Yeah, right, so, yeah. Anna whatever like she did. used. Yeah. I, I have a very, I, I'm, I said this yesterday, and I'm saying it without fear or favor. I am very sure whatever Okagbari used, she didn't do it knowingly. Okay. I'm, be, I'm very sure of that. You're, you're sure of that? I'm very sure of that. All right. All it wasn't right. a problem. That, that, that's fantastic. <laughs> I think the first time I heard about this doping was Ben Johnson. Ben Johnson, yeah. And then we had the drugs. drugs. <laughs> the word doping was... So was, was drugs was a big drugs. thing for us. You know, so it was, ah, Ben Johnson, don't go take cocaine. <laughs> you know, having watched True Scarface that. and all those movies yeah. and all that and seen that and then, you know, but... Um, well, here we are. We hope for the best for Nigerian athletes. She's a national treasure, and we wish her all the best. Let's hope that um, she gets a reduced sentence um, uh, and gets off the hook. Well, that's so much. We take Wallace Scott. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, and uh, for expert analysis on this particular issue. It was a pleasure having you on the breakfast. Merci. Time well, if you missed out any part of the conversation, it's all right to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. We will return tomorrow. It promises to be an amazing conversation. The time again is 7 o'clock. I am Messi Bopo. Have a fantastic Monday. And I'm Kofi Bartels. Thanks very much for your time. See you tomorrow.